there's this stereotype that fat people are just thinking about food all the time. And let me just tell you who thinks about food all the time. It's not a body type. It's people who are trying to restrict. It's people who are obsessed with their weight. I have never met anyone that is more obsessed with food than me back when I was really thin and fat phobic. Other people who are really thin and fat phobic. Other people who are fat and fat phobic. Other people who are any size and fat phobic. I think there's a little bit of truth to this, but I also hate, I really despise it when I hear these fat acceptance people say restriction. Most of the time, if you're on a calorie deficit, they will classify that as a restriction diet when I guess you could count it as a restrictive diet, but it's just like so far out of the realm of words that you could use instead. Like if you're sitting there and you go, I want to lose weight, the number one thing you do is a calorie deficit. Like everybody knows that, especially if you're in the realm of diet and exercise, it's dieting and exercise for a reason in that order, literally. So it's 95% diet and 5% exercise. And if you want to maximize your amount of output that you get from your body, you're going to guess what you do. You restrict the foods that you're going to be eating. So you're probably going to be cutting out things like soda. You're probably going to be cutting out things like carbs or at least limiting them as much as you can. Um, you know, carbs are good in general. I'm not one of these people that takes carbs and says that they're the worst thing that you can eat. I eat carbs every day thoroughly in my mouth. But if you don't want to have carbs, you can totally do that. I know a lot of people that have meat only diets and I'm not talking about gay men. So you have these people like splotch maker that sit there and try to convince you that they're not thinking about food all day, which could or could not be true. I think there is some, usually if you're like really, really deep into becoming thinner or like really maximizing your health as much as possible. Yeah. You will be thinking about it. Hyper, hyper focusing on what foods will and will not be optimal for you. But usually once you get it down packed, once you understand nutrition, once you understand what foods are and how they react to your body, then you go about it passively, right? You, it's like anything in life. You learn about something, and then once you learn about it, practice makes perfect. You're no longer thinking about these things anymore. You're just going with the flow. Okay, I'm not going to eat this pizza because I know pizza is bad for me. Maybe at the very beginning you go, pizza has this and this and this and this and this. That's really bad for me, so I'm not going to eat it. But then later on you go, it's not good for me. I'm not going to eat it, right? When I see people like this say that, I think they're ignoring the point. I do believe that Splotch Maker, especially Splotch Maker, is going through her day and not believe, not really thinking about food very often, which is not a good thing. Because in her case, in her scenario, if you're just going through your day and you're just eating food whenever you want to, and you're just looking at food and go, I guess I'll just eat this right now because why not? That's not a good way either to be looking at the foods that you eat in general. Because if you're just eating whatever food whenever you want to, however you want to, do you think the outcome is better or worse than actively thinking about all the foods that you're eating? Probably worse given the fact that you're obese. So we know that whatever routine you're using, whatever technique that you got going on, right? That is not working, okay? Especially because we know that you're obese. Anyway. First of all, it's not wrong to think about food. We need food to survive. But two, true, we need food to <laughs> seeing somebody that's like very, very obese saying that we need food to survive. It to me just comes off very, very weird. You're dying. Can we just be honest for a second? If you're obese, it's not good. Okay, totally true. You do need food to survive. But what you're doing is so far out of the realm of survivability that like using the word survive when it comes to the way you eat food. <laughs> That's crazy. That makes no sense at all. But go off, queen. It's your video. Please enlighten us. So we need to stop with the stereotyping based on someone's body. I think that sometimes stereotypes are a little bit funny. You know, they go, oh, black guys, they got BBCs, Asian dudes are really good at math, which I remember one time taking a driver's test, right? I remember the driver's test. This guy was Asian, okay? And he was one of the most sexist dudes I've ever met in my life. Like, I remember literally talking to this guy for 45 minutes. And within that 45-minute conversation, this dude was telling me how about how women don't know how to drive and they should stay in the kitchen. He was talking about cast iron skillets and things such and so forth. He kind of knew more about culinary decisions, but more than I knew any woman would. But... I remember this guy so vividly, like a woman had pulled down. He was like, I bet that woman, I bet she's, I bet she's a, she's a woman, dude. I bet she has like, and I'm just thinking, I'm looking at this guy like, dude, you're Asian. You know, like you guys are right there next to women when it comes to the bad stereotypes of, you know, people that cannot drive very well. Right. So I don't know. Maybe, um, 
wrong, but stereotypes can be funny sometimes. I know there are people out there that think it's racist to talk about stereotypes. Black guys with ankle bracelets, Asian dudes with math genius skills, Indian dudes that eat curry, which I mean partly is true, but I know a, a fair bit of Indian dudes that don't eat curry. They're American Indian dudes. You know, a lot of American Indian guys, they adopt the American culture. They're not really deep into the whole spectrum of Indian culture sometimes or whatever. I don't even know what the Indian culture is, like cutting food with your toenails. I don't know. Whatever, dude. Food to survive. But two, we need to stop with the stereotyping based on someone's body of like, this is all you think about. That's all your life. That's all you do. People just can't understand that I'll just be sitting doing my thing and I'll be like, damn, I really need some fucking fruit. Right That's a lie. That's a lie. You know, you're lying, splotch maker. You know that you had to, what you're probably saying, right? You know what's crazy too? Is if you have this scenario in your head where you're telling me that you're not actively thinking about food, then why would you sit there and go, I'm really thinking about having some food, some fruit right now. You're literally disproving your own point by making this point. But okay, I mean, that's what you want to say. Let's be honest here for a second. You're probably craving something that's very, very salty. Something with good amount of carbs. Let's be honest. Like, can we just be honest? Fruits? That's the first thing you think of, huh? I know why, because you want to make sure people are watching this video and they go, wow, Splotch Maker eats fruit? I eat fruit. How is Splotch Maker so obese if she eats fruit? Yeah, she probably does eat fruit, but it's probably like, it's probably in like a fruit cup or maybe like on the side of a pizza or something like that. Maybe she counts the pickles as fruits. Maybe, I don't know. Right now. Or damn, I need a fucking salad. That's how I know you're fucking lying, dude. Get on my face. Get out of my face. The only salad that I think most of these people are talking about is tossing salads. There's no way, dude, this, and by the way, you're not going to lose weight just because you eat salad. You know how many people I met that eat salads that are literally like five, six, seven hundred calories? Too many fucking people. They're sitting there coating them up with the salad dressings. They got the chicken. They got the beef. Most of these salads are not really even salads in general. They have croutons on the side. These things are high in calorie. You can eat whatever you want. I'm not going to be sitting here and telling you, I'm not going to be one of these people that sits there and goes, you know, you got to eat salads, you got to eat fruits and vegetables. You can do those things and they might expedite the process of the weight loss. But most of the time, I feel like people got to understand that when you're talking about weight loss, you can eat whatever you want within the calories that you have. Now, it's always better to maximize the amount of calories that you could possibly get out of each meal. So in the sense of like, I can either eat this pizza or I can have a well-rounded whatever meal that day. So dinner, let's say for instance, you can have chicken breast, corn, rice, or whatever the hell on the side of that chicken. And that's gonna be way more filling in the sense of like, it's gonna satiate you for longer compared to, I don't know, how many pieces of pizza can you eat? I could probably eat, if I'm being honest with you, in one sitting, I could probably go for six to eight slices, not even joking, not even joking. Six to eight slices, solid. Six to eight slices in my mouth. And this would be like a large, a large pizza. I can easily slide that down my throat. I don't know about you guys, but that would be, I mean, it would be relative light work for me. I would probably be full by the end of that. I know some big men that could probably slide down a box and a half of pizza. And now each slice of pizza is usually 200 calories to 300 calories. You gotta do the math on that one. You're sitting on probably 2000 calories on the end of that box. Or you can have a solid meal of good quantity of carbs, fats, and other things such and so forth on the meal. It's gonna make you feel more full. It's gonna build you up more than the pizza would. But uh, anyway, <sighs> I know why she's saying salad because she knows that there's like this stereotype of fat people that don't eat salads. And by the way, that may be true, but it's not the way to go. Need some fucking fruit right now. Or damn, I need a fucking salad. Or I need some fucking protein. Yeah, nobody's doing this. It's so weird. I don't know why she has to like specialize these particular types of things. She she must have just watched the video or something like that where some guy was saying something like this. So she's like, I don't know, emulating it. We all do it. Don't act like you don't. To a certain degree, we watch something. Or I used to do it a lot when I used to watch like old westerns and i used to walk around like this all day you know because I, I watched clint eastwood do that so i was like this all day moving my eyes instead of my head or maybe you're watching the avengers and you feel like you're iron man or something i don't know there's a whole bunch of things that we do that like we we try to emulate other people so maybe that's what splotch maker is doing here because this just seems way off compared to the usual things that she says like they don't by the way, none of this even made sense, given the fact that you just said you don't think about the foods that you eat, and then you just told me that you're just sitting down thinking about the foods that you want to eat. So even in the scenario that you listed, you're literally contradicting your very own point. Think 
that I could ever want a vegetable. They don't think I could ever be vegan. They don't think I could ever do anything. And by the way, if you're vegan, that's not that's not in an, that's not a total thing of like if you're vegan, therefore you're healthy. That's not even the no. That's not if you want to eat meat in your mouth, if you want red meat, whatever meat in your mouth. If you're a homosexual, meat in your mouth, whatever. That's fine. I'm not here to tell you that you can and cannot eat meat. Meat is good, but. Just because you're a vegetarian, don't sit there and believe that somehow because you're a vegetarian, you only eat particular foods that are centered on the planet or whatever the hell. That doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to be not fat. You know, it's really crazy. I know that they're in this fat acceptance community. I can think of like three people that are quote unquote vegans or vegetarians that are very overweight, very obese. So even in these particular scenarios, yeah, you could still be obese or whatever. So it's not even a case of like, oh, I, I'm vegan, so you know I'm healthy. That doesn't even make sense. I know so many people that are vegans that lack so much, like in terms of um, micronutrients, because they just, all they're, all they're doing for like five, six, seven years is like, eating copious amounts of carbs and other things. Ever want a vegetable? They don't think I could ever be vegan. They don't think I could ever do anything in my life that isn't revolving around when can I get the next crumb? I just think I need fruit. I need protein. I get it. And I move on with my day. Cool. It's truly that simple. Sure, it's that simple, but you're literally telling me you, okay, whatever, man, I already said it. Well, fat people are not gluttonous. Come on, dude. Come on, splotch maker. Come on. The very idea of your body, the archetype of your body is defined by eating more than what you need. That is the very definition of what gluttonous is, is consuming more than what you need. How are you going to sit there and try to tell us, all of us, as if we're, I don't know, absent-minded and we don't have a, a, any ability to connect dots or two plus two equals four. I guess everybody here has got like room temperature IQ. For some reason, you believe that we are going to believe that you're not gluttonous. That doesn't even make sense. You're literally chilling at an obese body percentage and you're trying to tell me that you're not gluttonous? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You can believe that, but that just really, this is like, when you hear people say these words and they go, I'm not gluttonous while they're chilling at over 300 pounds, at that point, how do you take anything that they say as truth? How can you ever take any of the words that come out of their mouth and go, this is an accurate statement? And I always try to give the benefit of the doubt as much as I possibly can. But these particular instances, I listen to these people and I go, I cannot believe that those words came out of your mouth and you're serious. It's truly that simple. Fat people are not gluttonous and greedy and selfish and obsessed with food. Most of the time, okay, so the gluttonous part, 100% is true. Greedy, probably true, but very passively since we live in a, a, a society currently where... Most food nowadays that's very high calorie, especially, is probably low calorie food or, you know, it's relatively cheap. Food nowadays is very relatively cheap compared to what it used to be back in the day. So there's that. Selfish, I don't know personally. Um, if you're even making a decent income, you I wouldn't even classify that as being selfish because most of the time people are eating out. It's very easy nowadays to consume thousands of calories, especially with things like Uber Eats and things like that and so forth. But I'm not even here to sit there and tell you that don't use those things. Go ahead and use them. I'm not shitting on Uber Eats. I just think that most people um, don't even know how to use their kitchens anymore. Like you, you move into an apartment and you got this whole a particular part of your apartment that nobody ever utilizes anymore. You know how many times I've walked, well, this maybe this is a guy thing, but I've walked into guys' kitchens and I'll go, uh, what are we, what are you, know, what are you going to make tonight to eat? And he goes, oh, whatever's in the freezer, I'm just going to throw it in the air fryer. And that's fine to have an air fryer, but everything you eat is outside the air fryer, is it either made in the air fryer or you get it from Uber Eats. Nine times out of ten. I, I never saw this guy ever. Ever, ever, ever use the oven or turn on the oven. His gas bill must be like $4 a month. But anyway, uh, greedy, selfish, obsessed with food. I would think probably obsessed with food, but probably not in the way that they're thinking about, like where they're probably um, considering food every single day of their life. It could just be very passive where you just find yourself constantly eating, constantly eating high calorie foods. It doesn't have you to be obsessed doesn't mean you have to acknowledge it, if that makes any sense. Like I've met plenty of people that have issues with dating and things like that where these people are very very obsessed with the person that they're with and because of that they don't realize um because that's just how they are that they are obsessed with the person that they're with or they are obsessed with something because that is just how they live their life for like for the extent of their whole entire reality 
They don't know that this is outside the normative value. So they're just consistently acting like they're obsessed with something, but they don't know. They don't register. So that's most of the time what I would consider people nowadays when they're very obese. Hi, everyone. I have an announcement to make. It's time we had a serious discussion about how the body positive community is toxic and a cult. They oh, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> More than Tracy coming out of here with some base takes. Oh, man. That's crazy. Despacito, we got it. Okay, we got one. We fought. She finally came over to the right side. Let's hear it, Slay Queen. I mean, I don't really, you know, it, 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 I, I can't wait to hear the words, but I got to tell you something. Um, this dress that you're wearing ain't it. I feel like I've seen this rug before in like an 85 year old grandmother's house, but anyway. I've harmed my health in so many ways by promoting this narrative that it's good to be fat and being fat is objectively healthier than being skinny and all skinny people should go die in a hole in the middle of the frozen tundra and um, fat people should reign supreme and become rulers of the universe. True, I mean, this is obvious. We all say this. I mean, you know it, I know it. Um, fat people do want to be the rulers, rulers of the universe. They want to collect all five infinity stones and they want to sit there and they want to oppress all thin people while complaining that they can't get out of that seated position once they sat down. They need a bidet. They need a bidet because it's physically they're physically incapable of even having the ability to wipe their butt cheeks. So, you know, that's it's obvious. It's obvious. Um, Thin people are oppressed. That's really what it comes down to. She's totally right. I mean, more than Tracy is obviously the most based person on the, in the face of the earth. And I, I really agree with everything that she says, obviously. This has been incredibly harmful to my weight loss journey and is probably the reason why I have not lost weight. Because seeing other people accept their bodies reminds me that my body is only acceptable if I am in fact fatter than they are. It's been really hard to discuss this because I'm afraid that my free speech will be suppressed in this country that is so obsessed with being fat, but I had to say it because it's my truth. And for those of you who feel the same about how the body positivity movement is a cult that is taking over the world and that we must stop it before it convinces people that they deserve human rights if they are also fat, um, I just want to be the leader in the movement against it. I nominate her. I nominate Tracy right now. Oh, all the power vested in me. I nominate Tracy as our Lord and Savior, the one true deity that rise above the rest to take up the mantle of defeating the fat acceptance movement. We need Tracy. She's She was one of them for so long. We need Tracy to be the individual within question, the person that we all look up to, the person that we can gaze upon with our eyes and have the liquidation of our eyes look while looking at her because it's, she's so beautiful. She's so elegant. Her very existence is, is just unfathomable that somebody could be as beautiful as she is, as knowledgeable, as based as Tracy. We need her to be at the face of fat of, of the fat liberation, sorry, the fat liberation on our side, which means that you know uh, the liberation of yourself from being fat. Because no one else is brave enough to say that being fat is unhealthy, actually. And if you're still here with me, I hope you know by now that this is an April Fool. Oh damn, man, she really got me on that one. She real. Oh man, I I thought I really thought that Tracy came over to our side. I thought she saw the light. But it turns out, you know, what's really crazy is that she can actually perfectly articulate, well, maybe not the taking over the world part and being the masters of the universe. I, I mean, I don't know about that one, like some He-Man shit. But it's interesting that Tracy can literally articulate these, these, these exact points that we say so often and then sit there and then like hear those words coming out of her mouth, have the ability to recognize what the words are, interpret those words, say those words, and then somehow still believe what she believes. I think it's just so interesting. Isn't that interesting, dude? That'd be like a racist guy going, yeah, you know, I know that black people are human beings and I know that black people have rights and I know that black people can think in the same way that I think and I know that black people, there's really no difference between being black and white and like all those characteristics that we use to describe black people and negative stereotypes are really not true at all. But I hate black dudes. I hate them. They're disgusting. I hate BBCs and I hate the fact that they lotion themselves so often. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 what I'm hearing here. How can you sit there and articulate these these particular points so well and not even like resonate with it at all? But whatever, dude. Happy Easter to everyone who has been excluded from family events, from friend events, from public events because they don't want to get COVID. I'm right there with you. You know, the like fake invites. We'd love to see you, but we won't do anything to actually make that possible. Splashmaker is 
insufferable. Anytime I ever hear Splotchmaker talk, I always think, oh, boo who? You're always the victim. Everybody always oppresses you. It's never your fault. Of course, it's never Splotchmaker's fault. What do you mean I want to do something? You're sitting here telling me that you want to do something for Easter and people are inviting you to come over for Easter, but you're literally taking that and going, but you're not doing anything to help me come over? What am I supposed to do? Like, you want me to hire a limousine to come pick you up? You want me to pay for the Uber ride? What do you want me to do? You're sitting in a car, are you not? What do you want every, everybody else to do to make it more accommodating for you to come to us? What are you talking about? You know, people have told me that Splotchmaker had a big GoFundMe at some point and that she was being annexed from her people around her because they, she was insufferable and she had a GoFundMe or something like that. I don't know, the full lore. But from what I can gather, Splotchmaker makes it very, very unreasonable for people to be around her. And I can see why. Anytime I've ever heard this woman talk, it's always somebody else's fault. And that becomes too much for a lot of people. I don't want to be around people that are never going to take accountability for themselves, that are always down in the dumps, that are always suffering from depression. And don't get me wrong. I understand that depression is super, super common, and we all go through stints of it and things such and so forth, but it is so incredibly toxic and draining to be around somebody that's like always in a bad mood, always has some problem, always is constantly complaining about stuff. And I think that for somebody like Splotchmaker, who has had to deal with this for an extended period of time, that's openly talked about her depression, things such and so forth, that's awesome that you can acknowledge that you have this problem. What are you doing about it? Please enlighten us. What are you doing about it? Her, Marissa Matthews, like half of the fat acceptance community is constantly depressed, constantly having these problems and does literally nothing to, to, to actually solve their problems. And instead they post on TikTok about how other people don't want to accommodate for them when it's unreasonable to expect other people to want to be around you in general. Anyway. I'm right there with you. I am you. It is extremely upsetting because we want to hang out with family today. Then go drive to them. Go catch a flight. Go do what you got to do. It shouldn't be. Why is it always got to be somebody else has to do it for you? Why is it always got to do that? huh? Why, why can't you just do it for yourself? Why is it always somebody else, Splotch? Hey, we want to hang out with friends. We don't want to be isolated. Then don't. Go catch a flight. Go meet people on Facebook friends. Go meet somebody on Bumble BFs, dude. Why are you so compelled to have everybody else do shit for you? You're a grown woman. If you have a problem with it, then change that. You don't... Man. So if you are also isolated on this day too, you're not alone. I want to leave a lot of space for that grief because you know you don't have to have that grief right damn dude she is looking real big here i'm not gonna lie to you dude <laughs> she looking real big if you are sitting here complaining about this this grief what do you mean you want to give space can you okay can you imagine literally sitting in your car recording a tiktok talking about how depressed you are because people didn't want to People didn't want to, I don't even know what you would even, what, what did you want? Like, honestly speaking, did you want somebody to mail you money, Venmo you some cash over so you can catch a flight? Did you want them to actually catch the flight? But would that be, would that not be enough? Would they also have to pay for the flight? And would they also have to pay for you to drive there for via gas money or an Uber? Would they have to pay for your luggage? Would they have to pick you up from the airport? Would they have to drive you back to their house? Would they have to put a bib on you? Would they have to wipe off your mouth? What do you expect people to do, Splotchmaker? Please, because all of these things that you're talking about, you don't have to have experienced any of these. And you're saying like you have grief because you can't hang out with your friends and family. Please, grow up. Please grow up, please. I'm not even like, uh, we all have times in our lives where we can't do things or whatever and it may, it might, it may or may not be our, our faults. Posting about this on TikTok and then acting as though you are the victim in this situation when all I hear is boo hoo, I can't do stuff for myself. It's annoying, it's really annoying. Because we aren't given a lot of space for that grief. In fact, we are actively gaslit about our own grief. With your grief is that you can't go see your friends and family when you probably in this particular scenario, you're literally just making sure that you can't go yourself. I mean, you're literally blaming it on COVID. 
that's fine if you don't want to catch COVID. I I mean that's I mean it's it's a valid concern. Sure, I you know being obese is definitely going to negatively affect health complications in general. So I you know what, dude, with this. You and I feeling abandoned is normal and valid. True. Expected when we're treated like this. So I just wanted to say, I see you. I am you. I'm with you. And it sucks. Shouldn't be like this. Then then don't have it be like this. Just go catch, about to catch another flight. Apple bottom, make them on a bite. I just want to have a good night catch a flight dude like if you don't want to you know what do you if you want to make time with friends and family go do it i don't know why you why are you even posting this on tiktok to, well, you want people to feel bad for you what are you talking about why are you what are you even doing right now wash your hair as a fat vegetable girly i do not think amberlynn is a vegetable girly at all like 90 percent of my diet is salads yeah i'm still fat because i'm disabled and my body works against me all the time but like Give me any excuse to eat mostly raw cauliflower or carrots or broccoli or leaves, greens, and I'm on it. By the way, even if this, I don't know what to what extent this person is disabled. Um, there are a few, there are a few times when somebody is disabled and it might be, it might be impossible for them to lose weight. But for most people, I feel like it's pretty possible for you to lose weight. And, uh, but if you, you know, if you need an excuse, you're going to find one. But uh, they're probably really right about this uh, Amberlynn Reed 100%, dude. I, I, I didn't even know. Is Amberlynn right now, is she claiming to be a vegetable girly? I didn't even know that was a thing. What is a vegetable girly, dude? What <laughs> To me, a vegetable girly sounds like when you're going into like the, you know, when people are, when you go into the hospital and those like kill bill things where somebody's like, um, they're, they're like in a coma or something like that, dude. And that, that could be like a vegetable girly or something like that. I don't know, man. I, I, I just really don't like it nowadays that we, we classify everything as girly as well. Girly bop, girly, whatever, man. It's just like it's hard to keep up with all these trends nowadays. But anyway, mostly raw cauliflower, carrots, broccoli, whatever. I'm on it. Or like Blanche, if you like – if is this Blanche? Blanche it if you're co looking to cook it. The one thing I've realized with watching Amberlynn's cooking over the years is it's overwhelmingly beige and vegetables are so not beige. That is so true, dude. Even though this person might have a little bit of problems with some of this stuff. Um, dude, if you've ever watched Amberlynn actually cook food, it is 100% all. It's always either one of two things. It's either brown or, or like some color of that or gray. I don't know why she all the foods that she eats are always like that in terms of when she cooks it, but it's that's really what it is. And she 100% whenever she cooks too, it always comes out so disgusting as well. But our girl doesn't have taste buds, so you know, realistically speaking here, it doesn't matter if your taste buds don't if you don't have taste buds, you can just eat anything. So anyway, how do you get fat eating vegetables? This is a really good question. You're not entitled to my medical information, but you know, it's really interesting that somebody can ask you this question when you're literally putting it fully on display. I just, I never understood that, man. It's like, I remember one time I was having this conversation with this girl. She's, oh, she was like having this hard time. She's like, oh, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm having a really hard time. And you know, there's a lot going on in my life. And I just, I don't know. Like, I really wish there was somebody here, you know? And I was just like, oh, um, you know, that really sucks. Uh, what do you, you know, what happened? Oh, there was this guy and he did something to me and it was really bad. And I was like, oh, what happened? She's like, I don't want to talk about it. And I'm just thinking like, okay. Like, I don't even know why the, why the fuck would you bring it to me then? Why would you ask me? Sometimes people just want to talk. Sometimes people just want a reason to make you upset. And I feel like oftentimes, like I'm not an emotional person, but I remember being very vividly in that particular scenario. And I was just like, well, why the hell did you even bring it up then? If you didn't want to talk about it, why would you go that far, put the hook in my mouth, start reeling me in, and then go, never mind. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, that's fine. But why would you bring it up? I don't know. I was very, I can't be around those people, dude. Sometimes people just start conversations and have it go nowhere. Or sometimes you'll have conversations with girls because I've never had this happen with guys. Usually guys are very quick to the point, but with girls, it could be like, the story could be about the time that a girl went outside and the umbrella like flew away. Right. But they'll be like 
50 million things that happened in between that. Like, oh my God, it was so crazy this morning. You, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And you're like, oh, what happened? Okay, so I woke up this morning and then I got and I brushed my teeth and I did this and this and this and this. And I'm just thinking like, oh, okay. So like your fucking day routine. Uh, Okay, but like, what was the crazy part? Didn't you just tell me something about the umbrella? Oh yeah, so I'm getting to that. So anyway, so I walked outside, right? And it was raining, obviously it was raining. It was really, really wet. So I went to go get my car and I got my car. And so I drove to Dunkin' Donuts and I went to the drive-thru. And I got to the drive-thru, I ordered this French vanilla latte. And then when I got the French vanilla latte, it was really good, by the way. I had it in the car. It was really, really good. And obviously, because I drank it all really quickly, I had to make another run. And I'm just saying like, what the fuck are you talking about? Did you, what, what does that have to do with that umbrella? What is the crazy, how are you going to walk me through? Like, it's like 20 minutes of you just telling me this exposition about how you woke up in your, your day routine. Sometimes it's just like that. With guys, it's like, bro, you wouldn't believe what happened to me today. And you're like, what happened? Dude. A homeless guy literally fell off a building and I looked at him and I was like, whoa, that's crazy. That's the story for guys. Like, it's just, it's just like that. Not all girls, obviously. I know there's going to be people out there like, David, are you sexist? Only a little bit. But you know what I'm saying. Be better. Be better. And the same scenario here. Why are you going to sit there and tell me about, oh, yeah, I'm disabled and my diet? You're going to literally go into this stuff, right? You're literally telling me all the foods that you like to eat. And this person asks you, how did you even get fat? This is like that one... That one video on Dr. Phil where the girl was like, the fat girl was like, hey, you, you know, what, what, what do you eat in a day to make yourself so skinny or whatever? And then the girl's like, oh, I do this and this and this. And then the girl goes, what do you eat since you're so fat? And, you know, like this and that. And the girl goes, I don't have to justify anything. I don't have to justify anything at all. And then it's like, dude, you literally just asked this person that question. And now you're, you're, you don't like it when somebody asks you that same question back. Dumb, dumb. But anyway. You're not entitled to my medical information, but uh, I'm fat because one, genetics. Oh, it's all right. It's bad. Ah, it's bad, dude. Okay. Anytime somebody starts a conversation with I'm fat because genetics, dude, come on now. What genetics are you fucking talking about? What genetics made you fat? Let's, can we just be honest for a second? No genetics made you fat. That's literally not how that works. You're consuming a lot of calories. You're going to be fat. That's just what it is. Not nothing to do with genetics. Like, I'm sorry that, you, you know, you maybe you don't like your parents. But they were not responsible for you becoming fat. That is a crazy ass thing to say. Unless you are under the age of 18 and then you're obese because you're living with your parents and they don't care about you or whatever, then probably it is you because of your parents. But in this scenario, if you're an adult, no, you are responsible for yourself. Two, as I said, I'm disabled. So any exercise beyond my limits could push me into cardiac arrest. And my limits are very low, even with the attempts. So first of all, <laughs> this person seems to have I see this quite a bit, actually. I see this all the time is where people will sit there and they'll say, uh, why don't you just lose weight or whatever? And they'll go, oh, um, I can't lose weight because I can't work out. Okay, that's fine. But like most of the time when we're talking about losing weight, it almost has nothing to do with going to the gym or working out. It has almost everything to do, like 90 to 95% to do with eating right. That's what it's all about. So when this person sits there and goes like, oh, I can't work out that's fine. But like, what about just eating less food? That would make you lose weight. You don't have to work out. And I hear this quite a bit where people go, oh yeah. Oh man, I'm going to go, I'm going to like, I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do this. I'm going to lift weights. And I always go, that's great. You know, being active is awesome, but that's not going to help you lose weight. Especially if you're still eating 5,000 calories a day, dude, you need to lower the calories. That is the number one thing that you should do. But I mean, some of these people, like, you can't, they can never learn. They're, they're, they're caught into this constant spew, and they do, they need to be the ones that actually seek out the information, because if you talk to these people and go, hey, it's not about working out, it's about calorie deficits, it's about understanding nutrition and eating the right foods, though, they won't even believe you, or they'll just, like, go in one ear and come out the other ear. They don't listen. So, it's really sad to hear this, but it is what it is most of the time. Hatred of processed food is a vehicle for fat hate. Your hatred for processed food is a vehicle for hatred for fat people. I do agree that processed food is not always the best. If you don't have a choice in eating processed foods, then I guess you don't have a choice, right? And you know what? To be honest, sometimes I will knowingly eat processed food because a lot of it does taste very, very good. So there's that. You should obviously be trying to go for more whole fruit, whole foods and actually putting meals together yourself instead of going out and buying like TV dinners or um, pre-made meals and like pre-packaged stuff and things like such and so forth because you're paying for the upcharge of somebody making it somewhere else. And then also most of the time because of all the preservatives, salts and other things, it's going to be way more uh, unhealthy. But I don't think 
that if you were somebody that was like really on your shit and you were trying to like very, very mid max yourself in the sense of like you're trying really hard to make yourself healthy. I don't think that means inherently that you hate fat people. This is like somebody going this is like somebody saying like if you don't suck dick, then you you hate gay people. That is crazy, dude. No, obviously not. That's not how that works. That just means I don't want to suck dick in the same way that if you don't want to eat a particular food, that doesn't mean that you're against fat people or you hate fat people. That's that's a crazy ass idea. But you know, given that the fact that a lot of these people do actually believe this or like they have their beliefs set into the, the this like very weird way of formulating their words or their thought processes, I'm not even surprised that a lot of them would think like this. But don't get me wrong. You are a beautiful person. If you don't want to eat processed foods, no problem at all. I look highly upon you regardless of whatever you eat as long as you're doing it in an appropriate way through the realm of responsibility, understanding what you're eating. Super, super amazing. Eat whatever you want as long as you're doing it responsibly. And this goes for anything in life. Do it responsibly. Research things, right? I mean, obviously, you're going to suck really bad whenever you do anything first, right? I remember when I was going to the gym, I was lifting weights. I didn't even know what I was doing, right? But as I started going to the gym more and more and more, I became an expert or maybe just like better and better and better. So it's like that with anything. So try, try, try. If you don't try, then obviously nothing ever gets done. But this particular point doesn't make any sense. You're beautiful, by the way. Skinny, pale, white girls who look rich could have all could could have the best politics in the world. But I'm still going to look at them and feel like something fishy is afoot. <laughs> okay. That's them. Yeah, that's great. Uh, bigotry right on, right on display right there. And, uh, and like, I know I'm pale white too. Okay. Well, I hate it when people say this. I remember I was watching this video. I, I forgot what video it was. It was something on like foodie beauty, but this person was like making a pretty good point, but then foodie beauty, I mean, sorry. Then this person said something that I thought was inherently wrong. And it just like, it destroyed me so heavily because now I'm looking at this person like, okay, um, you said something very wrong, but the person said, uh, white people shouldn't have an opinion on what is and what is not offensive to black people because if a black person tells you it's offensive, then it is offensive. And I'm just thinking, so if a black person told you that drinking water was racist or offensive, would you just stop drinking water? No, that doesn't make sense. You can't just automatically determine that if somebody says something to you or about you that could or could not be offensive, that somehow that means that it's offensive. That's dumb. That doesn't make any sense. No. Do not believe that. Just because you're offended doesn't mean that whatever I said wasn't true, okay? So if you're working on the assumption that, for instance, if a black person tells you that this is racist or whatever, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's racist or whatever, okay? In the same way that, and I hear these people most of the time, white people saying this, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Like, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, okay? If you believe that, then you yourself are racist because you are working on the assumptions that black people or whoever else says that particular thing has more value on that particular issue than you do, you are literally more racist than the person saying it. You understand? Because you believe that a person should have a monopoly based on the race or gender or whatever it is, right? It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is you have become the very thing that you swore to destroy. Be better, okay? Be better. And nobody is better than anybody else, right? You're all the same. Um, anyway. And like, I know I'm a pale white too. <laughs> That's that's an interesting a pale white too, and some people interpret me being pretentious and dressing like a nerd as me screaming as me seeming rich. But I feel like me being fat and clocky clocky count contradicts it. Some okay, well that's not true. I mean I don't, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Do people dressing like a nerd mean that you're you look rich? I don't know, man. That's kind of weird, dude. That's a weird way of looking at this, man. Um, but this is just self-hatred. I mean, I get it. Like, it's not cool to be white anymore, I guess. But you shouldn't just hate yourself based off of those things and try to, like, <laughs> debuff yourself. Because the way this person is looking at it is like, okay, so being skinny, being white, and being a girl means that you have, like, t like a, basically a monopoly on privilege. And then you have to basically take that, like, <laughs> all those things commutatively together. You're not a dude, apparently. So that means that, like, you're missing out. So, like, for instance, all these things together would probably mean that your privilege is at 100%. If you're a white dude, then probably your privilege is at 120%. But because she's a woman, I guess you're just sitting at 100%. And so because she's at 100%, she's dressing like a nerd, and then she's also fat, and then she also is kind of, like, I guess cocky, or I don't know what that is. Um, I guess that's debuffing it slightly. So maybe it's at like 70%. I don't understand it. The fact that I even have to 
the fact that I can even understand the way that they're looking at this type of stuff and then have to explain it to you should tell you something. I, <laughs> it's just like, it's crazy because I've been in this environment for so long and I can like almost, I can almost articulate their points better than them because I've heard them say it so many times that I can like understand it. And I, I'm always going to give somebody the benefit of the doubt or like try to look at it from a nuanced perspective, but this is just dumb. Like, it's just crazy to say this, dude. I don't know why there's a war against thin white women because... <laughs> Because I guess thin white women like are more vocal or they're maybe feel like they're more entitled. I don't know personally. I never, I've never seen this before. I know that Karens exist, but I don't think that Karens are inherently white women. I've met a lot of male Karens and I met a lot of black female Karens. I met a lot of Asian Karens. Like there's Karens all across the board, but I don't even know if this is inherently what they're talking about, but keep on being pretentious and keep on being fat, I guess, or clocky, whatever that is. I don't know what clocky is. Somebody please tell me down below in the comments, what is clocky? Somebody please tell me. Is that like, so hold on, wait, actually, I was about to end it right here. Maybe clocky is actually a word that they use for like Flavor Flay. Cause you know, Flavor Flay had that like, yeah, boy. And he had the big clock. Maybe that's what she means. Like maybe she's dressing really, really nerd-like and she has a big clock right there on her chin, yeah boy. But these diet foods have existed in Japan cultural cuisine for centuries. Bitch, I guarantee if any culture ate your low calorie shit noodles in any significant capacity for any significant time, they would have starved to death. Stop using my minorities to uphold diet culture and stop using historical revisionism to push diet food that could actually kill you, you nasty fucking racist. So I don't know what the context is here, but I'm going to let you know right now, some cultures have a monopoly on very, very healthy foods. And I know that it's very favorable nowadays to like, it's funny that you hear these people say, don't re re rewrite re history. Try to say rewrite five times fast you can't i promise and to sit there and say that usually they're talking about like china or like asian asian countries a lot of those countries have very very healthy foods like even the mediterranean diet um some cultures maybe not so much right american culture for instance very very not so good diet but it's pretty malleable depending on where you're from because the great thing about america is that even though a lot of people might consider burgers ch fried chicken uh, I don't even know what else we got here, to be honest, in terms of um, unhealthy food. It really just depends on where you're from. Like each state has their own determined food and culture based off of those things. So, but generically, um, I would actually agree that probably a large portion of Asian food, especially in the Japanese countries, yeah, that's probably pretty healthy. Um, noodles, you know, that's like an obvious thing. Rice too, probably. Rice is not inherently bad. And anyway, I don't know why you would call this person racist. Uh, and no amount of trying to convince me it really was a staple food for many years is going to convince me that because it's not possible, it's just not possible. The idea that caloric intake to avoid adverse health effects is not only rea in reality, 500 calories or more, 500 calories or more over what's recommended, uh. but you are not going to be able to reach even a survivable amount of calories eating a food that's designed to fill you up with only a few calories and that doesn't even make sense if you eat 2000 calories a day no matter what it is and you need to eat 2000 calories a day you will not gain weight and that's a factual statement if you eat 2500 calories and you need to eat 2000 calories you'll gain weight you understand it doesn't matter what food you eat and I Whenever I hear people talk about this, because I've had conversations like this before with people where they go, oh, I just got this food and it's very low fat. So that means I won't gain any fat. And I always go, yeah, that's not how that works. Like if you ate literally sticks of butter all day. Now, granted, it wouldn't be the it wouldn't be the best for you, obviously. But if you ate sticks of butter all day and it added up to 2000 calories, you need 2000 calories, you won't gain weight. That's a fact. And if you eat less than that, you still won't gain weight. It doesn't matter about the micronutrients when it comes to gaining or losing weight. It's better to maximize certain micronutrients though, to better suit the body's performance, obviously. But that doesn't mean that there's going to be like any adverse effect based off the weight gain. So like, for instance, a lot of people like to do this like keto or um, meat only diets, right? Where they just eat red meats or regular meats all day. And as long as it adds up to a certain 
for a certain calorie, you won't gain or lose weight. It is what it is, right? As long as you're eating the appropriate amount of food, it doesn't matter. And I feel like a lot of people just don't understand that for some reason, that it really isn't about the micronutrients. It's just about how many calories, calories in, calories out, especially when it comes to dieting. Now, I would never recommend that in the sense of like, you shouldn't eat sticks of butter all day. I would recommend getting a good balance of food and maybe prioritizing one particular one, depending on whatever you're doing. But in general, if you wanted to lose weight, you can eat whatever the fuck you want. I know some guys, I know a dude that just ate BK all day. Um, sorry, not BK, Mickey D's all day. As long as it added up to 1,500 or 2,000 calories, whatever it was at the time for him, turns a calorie deficit, he was good. And granted, he only ate like twice a day because you can't really eat too much McDonald's for that calories to add up. Think about it, right? He was having a, a, a large fry and a QP. That's already 1,500 calories right there. And he did that twice. So, I mean, there you go right there. Um, you can do it. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it if you want to. It's not the best thing though. You should probably always be trying to maximize the amount of calories and maximize the amount of nutrition that you possibly get out of your food. But if you don't want to, you don't have to shut, shut the fuck up and think critically in the nicest way possible. True. In the nicest way possible. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can by hitting subscribe and then hitting that join button right next to that. If you don't want to, that's going to be fine. I want to thank everybody that is a member, though. Thank you so much for being a member. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you for taking the commitment to be a part of this for, your, for the rest of your life. Um, thank you also anybody that subscribed to the channel. I appreciate you tremendously. I love your existence. You smell very delicious and awesome, nutritiously speaking. Um, if you watch the video in its, in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in cat, C-A-T. We always like to celebrate cats every single day because cats are beautiful creatures. Even if you don't like necessarily cats, I think you can probably still appreciate the beauty and the elegance of those particular creatures. Um, they have four legs and it's always weird to me whenever I say people dress cats up because they put shirts on them and cats don't have le cats don't have arms like we do, right? I have arms, so that means I can wear a shirt, but if I didn't have arms, I just had legs, I would wear pants on the top and the, and the, the top and the bottom half of my body, just like cats. So the way it should look is like pants, pants for cats you understand but uh sometimes people i guess don't recognize that cats are legged animals not legged and armed animals but uh it doesn't matter cats are beautiful you're beautiful you smell amazing you're not as elegant as a cat because obviously you can't jump nine feet but it's all right even though you can't jump nine feet i still recognize the potential of your body and how you're managing to maximize it as much as possible and i also really love that you're choosing to lubricate to exercise to really maximize the amount that your body can do, which honestly speaking is the best thing for you. I think it sucks so much ass that people go through their entire lives and they never actually see the potential what their body can do. So the fact that you're doing it is beautiful. And I think that it doesn't matter what age you are. If you're old or you're young, you can still do a lot within the body that you have and it's beneficial for you and everyone around you. So I really appreciate that you are able to do those things and recognize the benefits of those particular aspects of your life. Thank you for being here. I love you. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord, and my second channel. If you want to check out any of that stuff, uh, feel free to do so. I appreciate you and all your stuff that you bring to me. Thank you for spending time from with me. Thank, thank you for spending time with me today. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.